Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise M. Walker, founder of Hope in Christ Ministries. At Hope in Christ, we are healthy, overcomers, purpose, and we maintain an eternal perspective as we focus on our, our true identity and walking in victory in Christ Jesus. Let us open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin today's show. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again, again, again for your word, God. Your word is truth, God. And so, Father, we thank you, O God, that you are our creator. You are a designer. You are a sustainer. You are all in all. You are everything that we need, everything that we have ever desired it's all found in you father i ask that you will speak to us today about you being at work around us oh god and that you invite us to participate as we continue in our study of experiencing god Father, we bless your name and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining me again for Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. We are continuing in our study or review or um, just kind of reading over experiencing God as we close out 2018 and we begin a journey into 2019. That we all that are listening, even myself, would begin to experience God. Not just exist. Not just hear about God. Not just know from what others have told us about God. But experience God for ourselves. So as we've been studying and going through this devotional, um, there have just been pieces as I have been just um, enjoying myself um, reading it. I have stopped to just share my thoughts from my study. And it has been transforming of my mind where God has really helped me to understand that I haven't necessarily, even as a Christian, been experiencing him but more so just doing, um, just being and not ex not walking in the experience of who and what God wants to do in our lives. And so what we've been talking about have been just many, many different things that um, Henry Blackaby, minister, pastor Henry Blackaby, has discussed in his devotional. And over time... He has um, sold many, many copies because um, God has been at work in people desiring to experience him. And so he talked about just a few things that, I mean, just have stood out to me in the devotional. Um, again, is that he's always at work. Um, he pursues a continuing relationship. I think that was the one that stood out to me the most. Um he invites us to participate and he speaks by his Holy Spirit um, and his invitation um, for us to work with him always leads um, to a crisis of belief, um, which has been very powerful just studying that part as well. Um, and us having to make adjustments to walk in that great relationship with Christ Jesus. So today, um, we have today and then next week where we will conclude with experiencing God. So one of the areas we want to conclude with, and this is not the whole devotional. These are just the parts that have just stood out to me and jumped off the page. Um, is the area where he talks about God is at work around us. God is at work around us. So the scripture that he uses and references is John 5, 17, 19 through 20. And it says, my father is working and I am working. I assure you, 
The son is not able to do anything of his on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son also does these things in the same way. For the father loves the son and shows him everything he is doing. So the main point here in this scripture is Jesus himself says, My father is still working and I am working. And I assure you, the son is not able to do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. So as Christ walked in his humanity, um, he, um, obeyed, he obeyed as he desires for us to obey. So Henry Blackaby had great, great points in this chapter. Um, great, great points. And the areas that I just really want to focus in on are the areas that he points out where God tells you or gives you the assignment and then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and does the work through you. And that part um, amazed me because oftentimes in church, we are kind of geared in the area of our spiritual gifts and um, knowing and realizing, okay, well, that's my gift and if that's not my gift or my grace then um i don't think that i don't think god want to use me in that area so he kind of flips that in this chapter so we're going to talk about it he says in this particular chapter one one of the phrases that stood out to me is he says when you see someone seeking god or asking questions about christianity um you are witnessing god at work that is something only God does in people's lives. When you see people begin to ask questions about God, um, about Christianity, you're witnessing God at work in that person's heart. And I just thought that was very profound um, because he then also points out the scripture about um, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks after God. No one can come to me unless the father who sent him draws him, who sent me draws him. And that's John 6 and 44. Um, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I can attest to that myself to that particular scripture is that I myself, before I became a Christian, before I got saved, before I accepted Christ, I did not, as this scripture says, and the scripture in um, Romans 3, 10 and 11, where it stated, as I stated just a moment ago, God had impressed um, on the two scriptures. Um, there's no one righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. I personally, when um, at the beginning, when I was living my life, and, and as a youth and, and growing up, I did not personally seek after God. I did not seek after God. And I'm sure those of you that are listening did not necessarily seek after God. Oftentimes, God begins to pursue us and to begin to kind of allow us to know that he's there. He's in our lives. And um, we then begin, we know that he's moving on our hearts because we begin to ask questions. We begin to recognize, wait a minute, there's someone greater. Um, you know, after we've lived and, and, and I know for myself, after I had partied and I had done all kind of sin and all kind of things that I thought I was being bad enough to do, I begin to say, man, there has to be more to this, to this in life. And so that's what I believe ha happens in our lives. And so, I mean, I've just seen it from my personal experience that God will allow you to continue basically on your merry-go-round over and over, going round and around and around, and you're tired at a certain point. You just get to the point where you're like, okay, there has to be something more to life. Again, as I just said earlier, and that's where I was. And 
when I was younger, in my probably my early 20s, I began to ask that question. I began to say, you know, I don't know everything. I don't understand everything, but I know there has to be someone greater. I know there has to be something more to life than drinking and, and partying and, and just doing things that are just keep you, they keep you empty. They, they, you continuously empty, empty, empty. You think you're getting a little enjoyment because at the moment it's temporary enjoyment. It, you feel good for a moment, but then you go right back to that void that void in your life and so that's what this particular scripture is talking about that no one you know the two scriptures that we just discussed but the one in john 6 and 44 which says no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him so god began to draw me how do i know because i didn't go on my own i didn't go on my own and none, none of us do. That's why the scripture says that none of us seek after God. And I knew there was a void in my life. And I knew that all the other things that I had tried, they couldn't be filled by it. Those things that I had tried and tried and tried, that, that void could not be filled. And so that's... Um, you know, just an example of the word, you know, me seeing and experiencing that word in my life. And again, he says, when you see that, when you see people asking, when you see people begin to question and say, hey, maybe that's God at work. They're asking because they're curious. And that's God moving on their hearts. Then he also says, although Jesus was only passing by, he noticed Zacchaeus in a tree. It must have been evident to Jesus that for a man to seek him so earnestly, the father must be at work in his heart. So he just gave some examples in this particular um, part here. Um, And then he talked about how Jesus looked for the activity of the father and joined him. Even Jesus looked for God at work and he joined him. So those are the, you know, that's the beginning of the chapter. And then we go down and um, he talks about how the Old Testament patterns show us, um, you know, how those things work and how God is continuously at work in the individual's life. So he says in the Old Testament pattern, We notice that God gave an assignment to a person. The Holy Spirit equipped that person to perform the assignment. And then the proof of the the Spirit's presence was that the person was able to complete the assignment effectively through the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Again, he says God gave an assignment to an individual. The Holy Spirit equipped him to perform that assignment. The proof of the Spirit's presence was that person was able to complete that assignment effectively through the enabling of the Holy Spirit. So, and I and I agree with those points that he makes. At first, to be honest with you, I did not agree <laughs> um, with certain parts because he talked about, you know, the spiritual gift and different things. But I believe that Pastor Blackaby is talking about, in general, um, in a general sense, where we are now saved and God wants to um, work in our lives to change the lives of others. That may not necessarily point in the area of our spiritual gifting, but he may just simply want to use us to help a person see that, hey, I am God and yes, I'm real. And so um, that's where I agreed with that part of his chapter he he he, the first example he uses of course is moses um he talked about that um moses was given the instructions to go to pharaoh of course he talks about moses quite a bit in these chapters um but he says, well, you know, God told Moses to 
um, that he was going to use him basically to go to the Pharaoh. And Moses tried to get out of it like most of us do, you know, just paraphrasing. Uh, Moses tried to get out of it. And, but the Holy Spirit equipped Moses to stand before in everything that Moses needed. The Holy Spirit gave or provided for him so that he could carry out the work. As he said here in these particular scriptures, um, Moses was one of his examples. God gave Moses the assignment to go and bring the people out of Egypt into the promised land to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. It wasn't Moses' spiritual gift per se. Um, It was Moses allowing God to use him. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, the power of God did the work. And so that's where Pastor Blackaby is, you know, really kind of parking in this chapter. He was trying to get us to understand that the power of God is who uh, the Holy Spirit who does the work in our lives. And then he talked about David, King David, and the same thing. King David was a little boy when God said he wanted to use King David. And he couldn't quite, you know, grasp anything about being a king and um, taking the throne and any of that. You know, again, just like in our own personal lives. Um, King David had no clue as to, you know, back then he was a little shepherd boy. And um, they thought it would be the brothers that would be the next king and God said no that's the one that I want to use that's the one that I want to use so most of the time we'll see in scripture that God had used the person that we least expected why because the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit was going to come upon that person and you would have no doubts that God is real that God is real and again, and the, we can look at the scripture that says John 14 and 10, where it says the father who lives in me does his works. And that's what he did through um, those two young men in scripture. So then we have where a couple of scriptures that I pulled um, that I kind of wanted to kind of end with. And then one of the scriptures is Acts 1 and 8. In Acts 1 and 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. As believers, just like in the Old Testament, just like in the New Testament, We are continuously the New Testament church um, for those that are listening. But just like in the word of God, we, in that relationship, as we walk in pure and true relationship with God, and where God wants to use us, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us. And we will be able to witness to others through whatever avenue God wants to use us. But the first thing in order to, in Acts 1 and 8, in order for this to take place, we have to have a relationship with God. Our relationship can't just be association. We can't just know of God. We can't just, you know, well, I believe in Jesus. Because when we read the scriptures, the word tells us that the demons believe and they tremble. But they don't have a relationship with him. So we have to walk in relationship with him in order to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Acts 1 and 8 is saying. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I can go back and give an example of myself. There have been times I would have 
when when the Lord told me, begin to say, I've called you to minister the gospel. My first response was like Moses. Um, mm -mm, Lord, I, I, I made all the excuses in the world. Lord, I don't know about that. I, you sure you told me? I, I'm not able to do. So the first thing, our first response is to our, do it in our own strength. Uh, we start thinking about what we can do. But the word tells us that the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we will be able to do the work because the Holy Spirit does the work through us. And so when I realized that, when I did it afraid, I was nervous. But then the Holy Spirit would come upon me. And there would be times I don't remember what I said, but I knew it was the Lord God that did it through his power. There are times when I write, I don't remember what who wrote it. I look at it and say, did I write that? Because it was the power of the Holy Spirit at work in my life. So that's the difference. For those of us that are listening, that is the difference between the world and those of us that are in Christ. And he's using our lives. He's using us mightily to change lives for all eternity. So when you're in the world and you're just using what you say, your gifts and your talents, and, and we hear people all the time say, well, I got myself to this place because that's a worldly mindset. And that won't go beyond the earth. It has no fruit. It will not, it won't go beyond what we see in front of us. But when we allow the Holy Spirit by relationship, pure relationship, walking in true relationship with God. The Holy Spirit can use us mightily and people's lives can be changed. Another example that when I thought about when I read this particular scripture is the fact that there are churches all over the world. There are churches all over our community. But in a sense, those churches may not have the Holy Spirit dwelling. Thereby, nobody's life is being changed. There may be beautiful singing. There may be um, beautiful musical notes. There may be great oracle speaking. But the Word tells us in Acts 1 and 8, that the Holy Spirit will come upon us. Thereby, we're able to be witnesses of the living God. So if that is not happening, we're doing it all for naught. We're doing it all for nothing. We're no different from the world. It's just in a, a, another area of entertainment. Because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Jesus instructed that we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, would be able to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Be able to cast out demons. Not entertain them. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, God wants to work in the earth today. Just because a building has a name and it has church on the end of that name, does not mean that the Holy Spirit is at work. People's lives can never be changed if relationship is not there. The obedience to God is not there so that the Holy Spirit can use us mightily. Another scripture that's related to that is Acts 19 and 6 and it says, And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues 
and prophesied. They began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Spiritually, supernatural things happen when we allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Because the Holy Spirit works through that relationship. The Holy Spirit moves mightily. People can be healed. There's a hindrance of healing and deliverance and all those things because the church has Turn to the place where it looks like the world. When people are sick, the word tells us to go to the elders and allow them to pray for us. The word tells us to pray without ceasing. But if the relationship is not, if we're not walking in holiness and righteousness as God has commanded, the power of the Holy Spirit can't operate in our lives. Thereby people can't be set free. So that's the importance of all of this is what he's saying. God is at work but are we willing to draw in that relationship? In his summary and then I'll come to the last scripture that I wrote down. And um Pastors at the Black of East summary, he says, God is always at work in his world. He seeks to bring every person into a personal relationship with himself through Jesus Christ. Jesus described the way he knew and did the will of his father. Because the father loved his son, he showed the son what he was doing. Jesus watched to see where the father was working and joined him. You can follow that same pattern by watching to see where God is at work around you. When he shows you, join him. Keep your attention on God's call to an assignment rather than on your spiritual gifts, your personal desires, your skills, your abilities, or resources. Once you understand God's call to an assignment, obey him. And he will work through you to accomplish his divine eternal purpose his design eternal purpose his divine eternal purpose but in order for us to hear continuously and, and get those instructions as we we think about um this is not in my notes but this just popped in my mind we think about noah the word records that Noah walked with God. There is not a lot of places that the word records that someone walked with God, meaning that they continuously walked in relationship. So when we think about Noah walking with God, God began to give Noah very detailed, detailed instructions on the ark. He was at work. He wanted to save them. And Noah obeyed. And the Holy Spirit came upon him and helped him get the work done because judgment was coming. The other scripture I wanted to end with is Romans 8 and 26. And it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray. For as we are, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Again, likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. So where we think, no, Lord, I don't know that. I don't think you gave me the gift to do that. I don't, I don't know, God, the grace. I don't know if I'm grace for that. I'm saying because I, I can admit I was one of those people that would say that. But Romans 8 and 26 here tells us that the Spirit of God helps in our weaknesses because through His power, He gets the work done that He is trying to get done in that particular area that He wants to use us. I've seen it as I've obeyed. I begin now to say, Lord, what do you want to do in this book? You speak. You write it. You tell me what to put 
here so that lives could be changed. The Holy Spirit wants to do the work in our lives because people are perishing without God. And those of us that walk in relationship with him, he too wants to in turn use us as a disciple to bring people back to God, back in right standing, back in right relationship, knowing that the world will perish. It will all pass away. But only those, only those things, only Christ will stand. Only, only Christ. So let us not store up gifts and talents and abilities and houses and cars and all these other things but have no relationship and have uh, not allowed God to move through us so that people may be delivered and set free. Let us stay and go and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. I'll leave you with this. When you read the Word of God, when we read the Word of God, never in Scripture do we see that the Holy Spirit is doing the work through sin. When somebody is living deliberately in sin and um, not walking and being set apart for God, the Holy Spirit is not able to check. The Holy Spirit can use somebody else, but in that person's life, the Holy Spirit is not able to transform use that person's life to transform others' lives and bring others out. And bring others out. Because God is holy. The Bible says, Holy Spirit. Pure. Sin can't dwell. Sin is unclean. Sin is not pure. And so we have to come out of those things of the world. We have to come out of sin and turn to God and be delivered and redeemed and set free so that the Holy Spirit can come. The Holy Spirit can use the vessels in the earth to transform lives. We have to get in place because people's lives are in the balance. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, O God. We thank you, O God, that you have not ceased to be all-powerful. You have not ceased to be God and God alone. Let us turn, let us come out from among sin and destruction and all manner that is not of you. And you may use our lives and may the Holy Spirit come upon us and we be able to be used by you. That people, that lives are stand, or that are in the balance, that those lives won't be lost forever. Help us to see, God, that there is an eternal, eternal, not just in this earth, but eternal reward. Our lives being changed through us, through our obedience. We don't have the power. You have the power. As we obey and as our lives are changed, people can see the power of God at work. And they, in turn, can be transformed as well. Father, we bless your name and we magnify you, O oh God, for there is no other name. In heaven and on earth, that is great. We thank you and we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you hallelujah. We give you praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. 
Thank you all for listening to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. Let us walk in unity of the Spirit. Let us walk in relationship with the only power source there is. Because we replenish and we, we die daily outside of God spiritually go in the hope that there is there only one hope and that's in Christ Jesus our Lord thank you for listening be blessed and continue to hope in Christ